So we're almost done designing the front page of our portfolio. We have our responsive header here, we have this big intro section with our responsive typography, and we have a gallery section. All that's missing is our footer here. We see on the final page, it looks like this. So to make that, we're going to use Flexbox, and of course, this is going to be responsive. Making the mobile version first, that means we're going to make the version where everything is below each other, and then scale up, and then make the version where everything's next to each other. Cool, so let's start with the markup. I'm here in my HTML document. Let's make this a bit smaller for now. And we're going to use a footer tag for that. So we'll just write footer, which is clear that it should be a footer. And we're just going to write out stuff. So we're going to write made with, and then we want this heart in Antwerp. To get the heart or any Unicode character, we can copy it from another site, of course. But we can also look at this site called Unicode table. So here I can scroll through or I can type search like heart and I can copy that and then paste that in here. Cool. So that's my uh, little heart there. And then on the other side, what I want is I want a, um, a div basically with a class of links. So these are going to be links to other sites or other social media. And um, inside of there, I basically want two blocks. I want one that has just email. So I'm going to call this div.links-email. And inside of there, I'm going to write my email address. So I'm going to use a link. And here's going to be my email address for the example.com. And for the link itself, we're going to use uh, the same email address, but go, we're going to write mail to in front, which will make the link clickable and it will open in our mail application. So if you open this on mobile, for example, it will open your mail app uh, or the same on your computer. Really convenient. Then, so this is the email div inside of that div, but still inside of the links div. We want to make another div called links social. And here it would be cool if we have our social media icons. And to get those, I'm going to use Font Awesome, which is a site that has an icon font uh, and has tons and tons of icons. So there's lots of icons that we can also use uh, for other things, but they also have these social media icons. So we can search for Twitter, for example. And it will give us this Twitter icon. Um, we can download this. If you're not paying for it, you should attribute them on your About page, for example. And that will download an SVG. And uh, a good thing about SVGs is that they scale to any size or any window, so they're never pixelated. We'll do the same for Instagram. And we have these two icons now, and we're going to put them in the correct folder. So I'm going to open these up. Right, Frederick image, and I already had them, but I'll just delete them just for convenience sake. So this is the Instagram one, and I have another one for Twitter, Twitter brands. And I'm going to rename these logo Instagram and logo Twitter. So these are going to be um, images with links. So first off is we are going to make this link. So the Twitter one goes to twitter.com slash which is my Twitter account. And then inside of that, we're going to link uh, to an image, so right? IMG tab. And the source of that image is going to be IMG slash and then logo Twitter. Cool. You can copy and paste this line, paste it here. And then we can replace Twitter here with Instagram and logo Twitter also with Instagram. We should probably provide an alt tag, which is what you, for people who can't see or have difficulties seeing, they can actually have the text read out to them so they don't actually need to know what's in the image visually. Cool, so if we refresh, we can see that we have this Twitter logo and it's there. Uh, it's pretty big. And that's because we are using SVGs, they don't have a set size, and uh, it's also black. So there's a couple of things that we need to change. First of the width. Uh, for our image, we can just set a fixed width. So I'm going to use a width of 25, same for Instagram logo 25, and that will make them smaller, as you can see here. And then the color, we actually can change in CSS. The SVGs, you can also open in Illustrator and edit them there. They're just uh, like text or like uh, HTML, so you can also view them here. Um, but here we're going to use an image filter for that to actually flip the color. 
So let's write our CSS and then it will make sense. So we're done with our HTML. Now for the CSS part, where's mine? Right. So to write that, I'm first going to write the footer. And as I said before, we're going to use Flexbox here. The default way that we're going to style this, so the one on mobile, is in a column. Right? So they will appear below each other. If we don't specify this, they will appear as rows, so they will appear next to each other, as you can see here, in a bit of a weird way. So I'm going to um, do it like this first. And we're also going to add some padding here, just to make it look a bit nicer. And our default color is also going to be set, so I'm going to use um, I think I had a default color set that's six, seven, eight, but you can use whatever color you want. All right, and then um, we're going to make the version that's not for mobile. So we're going to say, well, do a media query. When the minimum width of our site is 550 pixels, then we want to use, uh, we want to select our footer again. And we're going to set our flex direction now to row. So they appear next to each other, and Flexbox puts them right next to each other. So we want to say, well, take the content, every space that you have, just use that in between the elements. So now one appears on the left, keep clicking stuff. One appears on the left and one on the right. So this is already looking quite nice, just with a couple of lines of styling. And again, remember, this also works on mobile, right? So if we scale it down, um, and some more. Now they appear next to each other, so that's really cool. So now all we have to do is style our um, social things. So I think the email thing and the social links are a bit too close to each other. So I have added these classes already, which is convenient. So I can say in the footer, I want the links email to be selected. And there I want to have a margin button of one rem. So I want to have some extra margin after this email thing. So if I see now, it has added this margin for me. Cool. And then for the social links, specifically, uh, I don't really need any signing. I like it, they're next to each other, that's fine, also on mobile. Um, but I want these images to be inverted. And the way that I can do this is I can select A. So this means all the links inside of the social block, inside of the footer, I want them to be inverted. So I use an image filter called invert. And now they're flipped like this. So instead of black, they're white. They're a bit too bright, so I can change the opacity to 0 0.5, so that's 50%. Uh, maybe a bit less or more, depending on what you like. And I don't like that they're so next to each other, so I want to add some spacing. So the way that I'm going to do this is for each icon, I'm going to say add a bit of margin to the right. So this last one, it's a bit redundant because there's no extra icon here, but it's fine. So 1.5 red, for example. Right, and now I have some nice sign. So, and that's it, we're done. So we can drag this, and the moment they get bigger, we get these nice icons styled like this, um, as you can see. 